All right, folks, we're going to do something a little bit, bit different. We're going to try painting while everybody is asleep. So, while everybody's asleep, except I am here. So, um, hopefully you guys will hear me okay. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, get it going on. The last time we left off is we were painting this light horse figure right here. So, the horse itself... It's pretty much done, um, and the tunic is done. So let's uh, let's go ahead and paint the flesh on this guy. And create our mix here. I'm going to paint everything that's flesh colored in this color. like to finish these uh, two figures because then we can move on to something else be a two stands a light horse and looking forward to seeing what these guys look like based and these faces aren't bad except the castings that they're done in this didn't have a whole lot of deep detail so they actually have pretty decent faces, but um, you just got to paint them lightly.
Okay, I think we pretty much hit all the spots. Let's go and uh, add a little bit more of this red leather here. This is actually one of my favorite parts of painting, is painting the flesh. I know I've mentioned that before, but it didn't used to be. This thing's misbehaving. We need to go to a different brush here. Maybe use this guy right here. So I figure I paint in the mornings. Well, I always paint in the morning, but we have the day off today, so for the Labor Day holiday. So I figured might as well get a painting session in. And if I film it, I'm not trying to find something to watch constantly and wasting time doing that, so. Try to be a little bit more efficient. Now we'll see if anybody comes on, because this is uh, more prime time for people on the other side of across the Atlantic. And I don't think the Labor Day holiday is a thing over there, but We'll see if there's any slackers over there that aren't working today. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people working from home, watching hobby stuff, so we'll see if any of them show up here. 
but regardless, uh, you know, I'm doing this for myself as well, so. Now, I don't know why this red leather is just, let's put some more of this paint here. It's been drying out from overnight. I don't have to put a whole lot down. Paid some toes on there because this figure is barefoot. To go back and mess with the uh, was the Citadel paint that I transferred over. This here it is in the bottle, and um, it's more watery than it was before, but I think it still should be fine. But uh, we'll have to get that last little bit out of there. It took a lot longer than I was expecting it to, so a little bit disappointed in that respect. But, um, you know, hey, if I don't like how it turns out, I just won't do any more of them. No big deal. I don't have that many, just have a, a couple of metallics.
seems like all the brushes want to misbehave today. Like a little tuft was growing out of the end of this one. I'd purchase some of those expensive brushes if there was someone here in town or I, um, I could just walk up to them and, and pick them out. Maybe I'll pick one up at a show, you know, whenever they have one of those again. So, just to see how it is. I mean, I love this brush. It just, just needs to stay in the shape. This is a, a liner, I'm sure. No, this is actually a round. I prefer the liners for this type of thing. The long bristles, uh, I prefer. But when I got these figures, I didn't think these faces were very good, but um, they're actually pretty nice. They just have very, very fine details. So we'll see if we can get that to be evident when I'm done with them. Okay. And uh, this is the, uh, for those of us just joining us, this is the last two light horse that I'm painting here for um, the Irish here. And uh, let's see if we can tilt this a little bit. Okay, this is the last two uh, Irish light horse here, and then we'll base them. We're not gonna wait for the rest of the stuff because the last light horse uh, is gonna be the general. So, all right, so we got this in here, and let's go ahead and add more of the sunny skin tone to the red leather. And we'll build this up. Add more to the toes again. You gotta paint some toes. It's obvious the figure's barefoot. And, uh, you know, you don't want some round stump that they're riding on, so. And a little bit more sunny skin tone. One more of that, and then we'll add a little bit of white to it. I got. I got to deal with this. I don't know why the very tip of this. And it disappears. I almost picked up some brushes there at the store yesterday, but I didn't think I needed to. I got plenty, plenty of them. They're just uh, this one just happens to be misbehaving a lot earlier than I would have expected it to.
Okay. And thankfully, I don't have to paint any eyes on these guys. Not because I can't do it. I don't enjoy doing that part. They're way out of scale. No matter how good a job you do, you're, you're painting them way out of scale. Guess if you're doing 28 millimeter, you gotta paint eyes all the time. All right, now we're going to add a little bit of white to that and bring that up. We got to make this, even this guy's got been out in the sun all the time. He is from Ireland, so he's going to be kind of pale. Want to make sure we don't make him too tanned here. Might be a little too bright. Let's see what we're looking at here. Oh, that's good. I wonder if these guys that sculpt these great figures can't paint. I wonder if they're out there going, well, I can sculpt, but I can't paint. I would think that they'd be able to, they could sculpt figures, they should be able to paint them. And it's gotta be a hell of a lot easier. Okay, now, I'm not sure if I need to go up any levels any higher than that. Let me take a look at some of these guys that I'm happy with when they're finished and see how they compare. No, I think they're fine. Now, we got a blonde guy. We got a light brown-haired guy. I guess we should probably make this guy black-haired. It's um, or very dark-haired. All right, let's go ahead and do that. We'll do his hair next. I don't know what's happening with this one little fluff. Oh, well. So it's giving me trouble. It'll get, end up being one of the terrain brushes. We can always find a use for stuff here. So they just get relegated to second tier or something like that. Okay, so... Um, hair. I know what color I'm looking for. And here it is. Good old SS camouflage black, which isn't black at all. It's brown.
All right. We're just gonna go ahead and paint. We're gonna darken this up a little bit so we have some maneuverability. If we start with this, we're gonna end up having to lighten that up. And um, I may not want that. Okay, so this, uh, this figure was primered with brush on paint. Um, I used enamel uh, Model Master Black Flat and You'd think it wouldn't be as shiny using flat, but I don't know what it is about it. Um, I'm not a fan of enamel paints other than for you know doing stuff like uh, the base coat or something like that. Now, I was using the Model Master Acryl, um, but it started mi misbehaving. It's very rubbery and I need to buy a new one. And um, the Model Master paints are kind of being discontinued. Um, they got bought by, uh, I understand Tester's bought, was bought by Rustelium, and they discontinued a lot of their paint colors because what was happening is the enamel paints were having colors and the, uh, and the acrylic paints were having colors. And the acrylics have been out for, oh, I think I start, first started seeing them in the early 90s. So they've been out for a little while, and I don't know if they're just not selling or... I don't know, but they discontinued a lot of their paints, and one of them, at least on the even on the rack, is the flat black from the um, Acryl range, which is what I was using for um, the primer when I'm doing the brush on primer. And I like the water cleanup, and I like that it's it's certainly thicker than like uh, Vallejo or something like that. So. Um, that's what I was using as a primer coat. And when I ran out, you go through a lot more of that paint than this. I mean, I'll have a Vallejo bottle that'll last me, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years. I mean, if it's not a color that I'm using all the time. Black and white don't last that long because of my painting method, but, um, but yeah, so it was very strange to have this Model Master flat that um, it was maybe it was old. I was just it was breaking down. You see, it's very shiny. It had a lot of um, thinner in it, and I never thinned it. Um, I threw one of those uh, mixing balls in there, and it didn't seem to do much good. But I'm not too worried about it. It just kind of adds a bottom coating to put the figures on. I don't know, just kind of weird. So anyhow. I was spray painting them black kind of to get the first coat and then brushing in the, the, the rest of the details to, to kind of save me some time. But last time I did that with the Scots, I had kind of a bad experience with it. Maybe I sprayed from too far away, but it got very grainy. And I figured, well, we don't want to do that right now and ruin these figures. So. It'll be fine. All right, let's add, we don't want to add white because that's going to make it look chalky. Let's do this. Let's add some of this color. That's a lightener. Okay, and since the horse is kind of drab, not really drab, but not a very exciting color, and the figure also has a brown type, we're gonna make his shield a little bit more exciting. So we're gonna give this guy a reddish colored shield. We're not gonna make it super bright red, but um, at least that's my intention not to make it super bright red. We'll see what we end up with. We actually are gonna use the red though. I don't wanna use the dark one, it's already too. Dark. So we're going to 
This is just a flat red. And I love painting with red because coming from a background of painting World War II stuff, you never get a chance to paint these vivid colors. So we're just gonna, we don't need a whole lot of it, I'm thinking. Good morning, Skylab. How are you? Painting early. Yes, I'm always painting at this time. The only difference is, is I'm filming at this time. So we'll. this will be a little test to see if I can get away with this on the weekends because everybody's asleep, but I'm always up at 5 a.m. Now, on a regular work day, I can't really do this because by the time I set this up, I have 30 minutes maybe to do it. So um, I'm not going to uh, do all that setup, but it's not a work day for me today. This is a holiday here in the States. I'm not sure if you're um, on the European side of things, but so we're going to start with this. We're actually going to go a little bit darker than that. And we're going to paint everything in the, and these, I really like these little shields are cute little buckler things. Targes, whatever you want to call them. I do love painting shields. And I mentioned earlier, this army is going to end up having a um, some allies I'm going to paint for them. Because I, I'm excited about building this army because no, I've never seen anyone build up save one person. Okay. Uh, and I don't think I ever saw him in action. My buddy had them a while ago for DVA 2.2. And um, <clears throat> let's add a little bit more red here. And um, for the next row up. See, I'm painting so thin that I, I'm not even blending. I'm already putting the, I can already put the next level of things. You're in Utah. Okay. Oh, we talked about Utah the other day. Perfect. Wish I was there. The weather, I'm sure, is a lot better than here. So I'm indoors. So, um, um, so I was excited to build this army because um, they're kind of boring looking. So I figured it's an opportunity to make something that's not boring. To, to make a, a boring army look not boring. And what I mean boring is these guys <clears throat> don't have any fancy uniforms. They don't, hell, most of them don't even have shoes. So it's a chance of doing something fun like that. I like building armies that you don't see. So um, that's fun. And when I saw that they had lots of options and allies, they don't have lots of allies, but they've got the the Scots Isles that can bolster them up by um, by some having some extra blade stands. Like if I want to use these guys like in an open tournament or something like that, um, then it really appealed to me. And I realized that in my collections, I already had all the figures. So for the foot, so I'm like, well, let's go ahead and let's give these guys a shot. And that's how it happened, really. So. Um, But yeah, I will do uh, I will do some fancy shield um, painting when I do the Scott Siles guys. I usually don't write anything down, so in other words, I'll save pictures I'll find on the internet. I use Pinterest a lot. Uh, I'll create a pin for a certain army, and anything that I find that's related to the army that I might want to use late for later for reference. Um, it's mainly ideas because a lot of the stuff we're just inventing out of nowhere. Okay, so that's as red as we're gonna go. We're not gonna go any redder than that, okay? And because um, I don't want it to overpower it. So instead of highlighting it with white and making it look chalky, we're gonna grab some of this. I think this is, uh, what yellow is this? Anyways, this is a yellow that's hanging out over here that's from a couple days ago. Let's go ahead and um, add some lightning to it. I'm 
but um, we'll do a we'll do a painting video on the on the shields. What I was saying is I use my phone for it a lot, so since I'm filming with my phone, I can't do both. So I'm going to get a little sketchbook and draw some of the patterns of uh, of the shields and stuff. It's more of the patterns more than the colors. The colors I just don't really know, so I'm going to have to go with my gut on that. And um, I'm sure it'll turn out just fine. And I'll be happy with it. You know, same thing. If you're if you're painting an army like this, that's mostly made up of folks that wouldn't have a lot of money. Okay, non non fancy folks. These guys don't even wear shoes. We're talking typical non fancy folks here. If they're going to have a red shield and it says, oh well, you know the Irish used red shields. They're not going to use a bright red shield that's totally like this. They're going to look, they're going to use something that's faded or they use poor quality paint or something like that. At least that's my feeling on it. So let's go ahead and bring the shield all the way up since we're working on that. All right. So we're going to grab, we're going to grab some of this metal that we mixed that we transferred over to the other pot. Since it's just sitting over here percolating. Let's see if it's alive. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Let's get some, add some on here. This is just extra that I had on the brush when I was transferring it over. I'd like to use this up before we use any more. Heck, it's already on here, so let's see how it's behaving. I don't want to ruin my figure either, trying to be a cheapskate. But it's already here. We might as well use it. Yeah, it should be fine. We got a little bit of moisture here. There we go. So I'd like to leave a tiny little sliver of black in between those the, the colors. It helps them all pop. But I'm up at this time anyways. So I just decided to film it, so I'm being a little quiet, quieter than my loud self. So hopefully you guys can hear okay. I wanted to get these guys done. If I don't film, I'll end up looking at different things on the internet to kind of have a, as a background and, and spend time uh, surfing. And I'd really like to get these two guys done today. These two stands done today. Okay, that's that's done. The metallic part. Let's rinse this guy off. Got more comments. You've been watching The Last Kingdom on Netflix. So Dark Ages armies are appealing to me now. So a couple of years ago, I want to say it was a couple of years ago, it might have been three. Um, I watched season one and kind of liked it. I just don't like the main guy. I couldn't get into it. So I, I think a, like a couple of weeks ago, I started watching where I left off at season two. I think they're on three and four now. And I don't know. It's, um, I don't really like the Dark Age stuff, but I'm, I'm fascinated by these figures that look non-exciting and making them look exciting with all the different shades you could do on like the linens and stuff like that. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, and a lot of these Dark Age armies are kind of crappy. So that kind of appeals to me. Um, just as a difference. So, yeah, I'm kind of digging them too. Um, the figures aren't very exciting, but some of their flags really are. I, I got the, 
little big man studios flags coming through and in, in this set they have welsh uh, irish and uh, scottish so i may roll right into the pre-feudal scots afterwards so i am digging um this but i don't know i just you know i i wish there was um there's a lot of shows that i stopped watching because of the cast and i'm like you know if you can't dig who the cast members are in it you know you're stuck with them for a long time um then it's an issue now i think i'm the exception because a lot of people like that show and i like season one um but i i can't I can't watch shows and paint. So when I'm watching a show, it's going to be only at lunchtime. And um, I, you know, I'd, I'd rather not sit in front of the TV and, and watch it. I don't know. This is just more rewarding. But um, same thing happened with the Vikings. I was watching the Vikings for a long while. And then you just kind of petered out, you know, so... And, of course, I was watching both of those shows at the same time, so I was getting confused as to who's where, because I think Last Kingdom takes place, like, one generation earlier than Vikings or afterwards. I think it's earlier. But, you know, they're both historical fiction, so you can take that for what it's worth, you know. But Yeah, I watched like four seasons of the. I, I have to figure where I, where I left off. At. But again, Vikings was the same thing. I didn't like the main Ragnar guy, so. Um, but if you ever watch the Vikings, one of our favorite things. There's a scene. I, I want to say it's in season one, might have been season two, but there's a part in the Vikings where um, they go to raid uh, England. Um, it's got to be in season one because it's like on their first raid in England, I'm pretty sure. And they bring their longships in and uh, the English have their armies that have, um, they've, they split their army in two um, so they could cover two areas. And the English general at the time uh, says something along the lines, you know, the Vikings, instead of splitting their army, they go and overpower one side. And uh, the English general said something along the lines of, we, that's not fair. They didn't split their forces. And the first thing I thought of is that you'd be a terrible, you'd be a terrible commander in real life if you did something like that. It was hilarious when I saw it happening. <laughs> but yeah, I wish I could watch TV and paint. I can't. Well, I guess I could. I just wouldn't get a lot done. So, but I do love historical fiction like that. I think that's the way to, to tell the story, you know, because there's a lot of empty holes and things that we know, and you can't just tell a, an empty story like that. Okay, so we're, we've got this little linen thing that we got to paint now. So this guy's got, and I and added a little bit of plaid on there, or tartan as they like to, this one's green. It's a little like the cushion that he's sitting on. This one's red on this guy. So this guy, well, let's think what color his cape's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of color and give him and give him a greenish type cape, okay? But we're not gonna go ape shit with a green, okay? So, because colors are expensive. So we're gonna start with a color that's probably brighter than I'm gonna leave it in. This one here, this black green, although it's not very black. Um, it looks like it's, let's take a look at it. Well, this one's brand new. This one's never been used. Ooh, a virgin color. This one looks like it came from Hobby Lobby or new, new one. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful color. We're going to mix it up with black. Do I use Osprey books as a color guide? Yeah, sometimes. Um, the thing with Osprey books is, is... Thank you. Let's make a noise over here. 
I don't have any pets, so maybe this the oh it's the it's the paints re um, adjusting. Thank you. They're closed, so. Um, the thing about Osprey is there's so much stuff they just don't know. And sometimes they'll take the safe route. And, you know, like when you buy a book on, say, um, let's say you're going to build Charlemagne's army, okay? Like the Carolingians. What you really want the Osprey book to show you is some shield patterns. And that goes for if you're building Alexander the Great's army, just some shield patterns for like the cavalry or something like that. And a lot of times they'll cop out and show you the figure from the, where you see the inside of the shield, not the outside. So you still have to invent everything. So a lot of it is just gut instinct and what you like. And I don't know, you kind of have to go with that. Uh, I usually get the Ospreys and um, just so I can eliminate options of what judgment calls I'm gonna make. So in other words, you're gonna look at an army where there's not a whole lot of information. Anything you can eliminate doubt as to help you make a decision on how you're gonna paint it is moving in the right direction. Because most of the time you're just having to invent things out of nowhere. Like these guys, there's hardly anything, you know, what information do I have to build on on Irish Light Horse. Okay, there's very little on the Ospreys. I've got the uh, armies of um, uh, medieval Europe, the the uh, War Games Research Group books. Um, and there's some people that make 28 millimeter manufactured figures that are pre painted, that are painted, not pre painted, but they've been painted by folks. Um, foot sore miniatures. I don't do 28s, but there's lots of really nicely painted 28s uh, out there. That could um, that you could use as an example, not necessarily as a Bible from the standpoint of this is exactly what they um, what they wore, but as an idea of maybe what somebody's interpretation of it looks, and if that falls in line with what you were thinking, then it kind of reinforces um, maybe some ideas that um, that you had to kind of uh, help you make a decision. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, at least you can see, you know, like, you know, if you, all you've read is these guys wore saffron robes and they wore saffron robes and you're sure like, I don't know about these guys all wearing saffron. It just seems kind of stupid or that it, they wouldn't look all right together. And you look for some pictures of some folks that have painted some miniatures with that paint scheme and you like how it looks, then that helps reinforce you making a decision and a painting your guy's saffron, you know, saffron like these little guys here. You know, they got a little, the, the Lina shirt. Um, but um, that's what I use more than anything. It's a combination of different things. I don't think <clears throat> one, I don't think Osprey has all the answers that we're looking for because a lot of this stuff just wasn't written down. I mean, take for instance, um, take for instance how many, and this is even in Osprey books, how many times the subject matter will be something from um, BC or something from the Old Testament or some biblical battle. And you're like, cool, I can find out how the Assyrians are painted or something like that. And inside the Osprey book, they'll show like a stained glass, um, a, a stained glass battle scene or some figures that were done in the 14th or 15th century in France that depict, say, Herod, um, the army of Herod doing something. But they're all dressed in contemporary garb of the time that the, that the stained glass was done in. That's useless, you know, but it just proves that that information wasn't written down. You know, so a lot of it, you have to go down with your gut instinct. And I, I think that as we go along, we're going to, the clarity of what some of these folks wore is going to be, is going to be more apparent, but there's just some things we're just never going to find out, you know, um, the example, the example I always use is, you know, they want to put a colony on Mars, but we haven't found all the stuff that's in uh, our oceans. And we still don't know definitively what color the Romans painted their shields. Because the stuff wasn't written down. You know, we want to know it as war gamers so that we can, you know, 
experience, see whatever, what it was like to live, you know, or, or fight battles in, in a, in a older time period, but the stuff isn't, uh, isn't there. And, you know, even things that, in my opinion, aren't very obscure and shouldn't be very obscure, you know, like that whole, like if you're talking about Hannibal, I mean, Hannibal's a pretty known guy, a pretty well-known guy, right? And nothing exists from the time period that the Battle of Cane to Zama, and he was, he was traipsing around Italy for like 14 years, and all the stuff that's that's written about it is hearsay from other sources that no longer exist because there was only like one person that wrote at the time about it and it, and, and the information's gone. So, you know, and that's not really obscure. That's kind of, you know, that all happened in a place where, you know, I mean, the Romans wrote a lot of stuff down, so it just didn't survive. So it's just unfortunate that we just, you, you got to make judgment calls all the time on stuff like this. But ultimately, as long as you're happy with it, you know, you're always going to find somebody that says that, oh, well, you know, why are your, uh, why are your Irish not painted all green? You know, that should, they should be wearing more green than that, you know, so ultimately, as long as you're happy with it, you could, you could be as anal retentive as you want to be about it. Um, so I do get ospreys, but a lot of the ospreys just don't have the information that we're looking for. I mean, look at even information on like battles. The information on battles just isn't there. Um, some some stuff just isn't isn't even written down. Like, well, you know, I, I think casualties unknown or you know forces unknown. We're more concerned with it than the people were at the time, I guess. So, to answer your question, yes, I use ospreys, but. They're only so good. I use Ospreys. I figure, okay, I'm gonna dump 15 bucks into this, but at least I won't have any doubt. It'll, 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 it'll eliminate excuses that I may have to not finish an army because I don't know what to do. Um, sometimes you can get analysis paralysis from the standpoint of you know researching what figures were painted like, and you don't get anything done, so you want to avoid that. Okay, you see this guy. This guy's already getting into the kind of a bright green cloak. So we're not gonna, it's not gonna be any greener than this because it's just gonna look out of place. So we are going to So like for instance on these on the light horse, when I found out on my sources what colors they used, they talked about um, the shirt color, the, the line of being uh, the saffron. And then it talked about red cloaks, blue cloak. No, I, let me let me let me take a step back. It talked about one figure in a gray cloak, and then it talked about tunic colors on the light horse being in red and blue, and that's just not going to look right. So I just decided not to do that. Okay, because the tunic that he's wearing is the same damn shirt all these other impoverished folks are wearing. All these little skirmishers. They're all wearing a lina, which is just like a long, long shirt, you know, all one piece. So I'm like, well, these guys are almost as, they have the same type of thing on a figure. So I'm not going to paint them red because it's just going to look wrong. You know, I don't want to paint every army red. Just about every army everywhere had access to some kind of red tint, but you can't paint every army with red in it, it's just not going to look right. It's going to look like all you had was three colors in your, in, in your paint set and you had to use them all to paint your army. That's the impression it gives me. So, um, I don't know what the hell I was saying, but you have to, you know, you can't just go with, um, you, sometimes you just got to go with your gut. Like we're going to add a, a green cloak on this guy. What's one of the four that will have a green cloak. And um, I'm, I am going to put a tartan cloak on the, on the general, only on him. The other guys, these will all have cloaks that, oh, I know what I was saying. So they said blue, um, so they said a blue tunic. Well, I'm not going to put a blue tunic, but I'll give this guy a blue cloak, but I won't give him a very bright blue cloak. So this is a cloak that um, was either tinted with 
something that faded over time or what have you. I didn't want to use these super bright colors with these guys because it'll look really out of place when I when they when they're next to the rest rest of the infantry. So, but you end up finding yourself making all kinds of judgment calls constantly. Now, what's going to happen when I add a little bit of white to this? Is it going to fade it too much? We'll see. Got a little bit of white here. Nah, we should still be okay. I didn't want to add yellow and, and yellow it up any because it's going to bring it closer in line with the color of the tunic, and I want them to pop out from each other. So they'll they'll look. Yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. Yeah, so I've been wanting to do an Irish army for St. Patrick's Day. Not that I'm Irish or anything, but I just figured it would be appropriate. And I try to get it in the spirit of things. And um, I'm glad I started these guys this far out because, man, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do on these folks. But... Make sure we don't fade this out too much. I'm just using the most minuscule amounts of paint. But I actually find this very satisfying to do, what I'm doing right now. These, adding these folds and wrinkles in different places. I like this. I don't like primer just putting on black paint without any regards to anything. So... Adding these folds, one of my favorite things to do, that and uh, painting little wood, making things look like they're made of wood, even though obviously they're not, they're a, cast, a metal casting. Even more than faces, I like doing this, because you can't go wrong. It's almost like you're just adding highlights in different places. guy looks like he'd be a ranger or something like that. This is a dark green cloak. And it's gonna, not going to look really out of place with this other figure. So, just like, a, you know, if I did a red, if somebody said, yeah, I got these really subtle looking guys, and but I painted a green cloak and a red shield on one guy, they'd be like, man, that's got to look really black. Or look really out of place with some of these other figures. Like, let's see, let's grab some of these other guys here. You know, but not really when you get down to it. They're not going to be. So a lot of his judgment calls, a lot of these illustrations, even if you see some illustration that, that was done a long time ago, you'll be like, oh, look, they painted their tunic red. Well, the people that painted things like, uh, a long time ago, they had very limited number of colors available um, if they're using like natural stains and stuff like that. So they may paint something. Um, they may paint something in one color, and it's not really that color. It's just what they had to work with. Uh, Bayo tapestry, for instance, you've got uh, those stitches and stuff. Well, they didn't have every single color in in the thread, so. I don't know, a lot of it is just judgment calls. You just got to do what you're comfortable with. Okay, so I think we're done enough with the cloak. Nice thing, if I go back and finish them later and go, you know, that doesn't have enough folds in there, I can, um, I can go back and touch it up. It's not, it's not a big deal. We're going to do his little javelin next. And that's not still alive, is it? No. Nope. I know what color I did. I, I believe that's Iraqi sand. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color as long as it's similar. It 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 works just fine. Okay. 
put that there and the other ones I've done with a like the chocolate brown base we already have this color alive so we're going to use this SS camo black this must be one of the colors of P dot camouflage that they used why they called, decided to call it that Okay, so we're going to come in here and then add a little more. That's good. All right, and we're going to paint his little jab on that color. All right, and then we're just going to take that same color. We're going to add more of this Iraqi sand. Or any multitude of colors that could be similar to this. This is an imperfect thing. Other than I don't really want to use say javelins that are painted in bright colors for this army. Um, I just figured that they wouldn't go through the effort of that. I mean, if they're going to go through the effort of painting uh, javelins, then they would have gone through the effort of freaking wearing shoes. So, you know, it's kind of a priority thing. You got to wear shoes before you're worried about what color your javelin is. <laughs> Especially javelins, since you're just going to throw them away. You're never going to recover them unless you win the battle. And you can pick them off the bodies if they're still usable shape all right now we're just going to use Iraqi sand on top of that This is why I don't put the figures on a popsicle stick. I just think that if I had four guys like this, I wouldn't be able to, to, to twist them around like that. Um, I kind of need that flexibility for the way I paint. And you know what? Let's put some new white out there because I was struggling to get some of that other one out. Let's, we can go ahead and rinse that so we don't have that drying out on there. Let's grab Mr. White over here. All right, and we'll just put a little dab. I like to keep my colors kind of in the same area so I'm not hunting for them. Okay, we're done with that. Now, I've got to go get a refill, and I'll be right back uh, within five minutes for sure. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back, and we'll finish up this guy.
Okay, we're back. Let's see where we left off here. Make sure we don't have any new issues here. Skylab says, sometimes I put the figure on top of an old paint bottle using blue poster tack. It gives my figures a greater surface to hold. Yeah, I guess I could use that as well. I don't have the blue stuff. I have the white one, but... Yeah, I used that for something. What was it that I used that blue tack for? Oh, you know what? I was painting like a terrain thing. Like, say I was doing something like this. Like this little guy. And just used some blue tack and stuck it to to something. You know, it was a paint bottle. It was something like this. And then that way I, I could grab it. So, yeah. Thanks for reminding me of that. I forget about I forget about blue uh, the tack stuff. You know that's the poster tack stuff that. Uh... Oh, here's some right here. Yeah, I just I forget about even using this. So, yeah. Yeah, I gotta paint these two little guys here before I'm done with the with the army. And I picked these things up. I don't know. Probably they gotta be JR miniatures or something like that. And they've got to be like from their six millimeter range. So I picked these things up every bit of 15 years ago and just never done anything with them. And, uh, you know, this is going to be our runes or dragon eggs or dragon eggs, I like to call them. <laughs> okay. So what do we got left on this dude to do? Oh, the RGR miniatures? They're out of business. Now, some of the GR stuff... Honestly, um, looks not very appealing to paint. There, I said that as nicely as I could. <laughs> um, but those those look really those these look really nice, um, and mainly like their building. Some of their buildings don't look very good, but this looks good. This looks uh, looks like a fine piece. There's even some kind of a rune on here. But these aren't going. We're going to use these as. Uh, um, edifices and uh, I may end up using this one at the camp I'm not really sure yet um, not really sure I was looking up stuff with pictures of Ireland and there's a place where the the seat of the high kings had and there's uh, something called the hill of Tara T-A-R-A and it looks almost exactly like this so that was um, there we go I got the focus on that yeah, so it's got like little doors, almost like a mount. I forget what it's called. There's something there that's called like the um, the tomb of the unknown. It's not that. It's the tomb of something. And it looked similar to this. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's a common thing then. So we may make that an edifice or... I got to find those sheep. I got to do a, a dig and find... I've got a whole pack of like sheep from... Uh, from uh, Chariot Miniatures. I think back when they were called Chariot, now they're Magister Militum. I believe they're from... Are they in Australia? Or maybe they're still in the UK. Anyhow, they have a lot of stuff. Not as much as Essex, but close. They make a lot of different figures, and I had some sheep from that. I've got a pack of them that I've had for... 15 years or something like that, and I need to, I've never used them for anything. Okay, so, um, horse strappings. So this is kind of a medium colored horse, so we're gonna go light on the horse strappings. So I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that, um, that I like to use. And like I said, I, I do these videos for myself, and just talking about the stuff that I'm doing actually helps me try new things because it's kind of like verbalizing what I'm doing. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I find them helpful for me. So I'm glad, I'm glad we're on this journey together. <laughs> so we're going to use uh, buff color. I could have used anything. I didn't want to use exactly the same Iraqi sand. It's a little bit different. You can't, yeah, this, the phone really, these light really washes everything out. Let's see if we can... Get the light go a little bit farther away you guys can see the difference this one's much much more yellow than this one so i don't, I don't want to be lazy and continue using the same color we're going to use this 
khaki. This is what the horse straps are going to be. And the problem that I have with horse straps is you end up doing the, and when I say horse straps, we're going to call the harnesses and stuff on the horses. Um, I have a, I have difficulty coming up with, ooh, you're a messy one. Let's take care of you. Okay. Um, I have trouble sometimes coming up with um, a, a different color to use for the, the harnesses and then the reins a different color. I don't want the harnesses and the reins the same color. So um, I discovered didn't discover. I, I, by talking about things out loud, I found out a way to do a, a method that I was happy with. So we're going to do the, um, and we still have to do this little cushion down here. We're just putting that off, um, for the time being, but so, um, we're going to do the, the horse, um, uh, harnesses and we're going to use this color as the base. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and add black to it. Okay. Um, mainly because I don't want another brown type thing on there. We want to make them pop a little bit. No, another brown, the black dive too. Damn it. Some of these, some of these colors don't last overnight. Well, I'm not putting a whole lot of paint there either. So, so we're going to do, we're going to create the base color for the horse harnesses. Okay. And this is going to make it look a little grayish and that's okay. And see if I can show you guys this, this method. Okay, so this is the color that we're going to use as a base color of the horse strappings. Let's go a little bit darker. All right, now we're going to paint everything that's horse strap, which there's not a lot on this horse, fortunately, in this color. And it's this right here. We have around the part around the muzzle, part around the top of the head. And we're going to go ahead and paint the reins too, the same color. All right, let's go to the other side. Same thing. And same thing here. And same thing here. And what I'm about to do, I have just started doing now. Because the reins, I would go, after I was done the, doing the straps, I would have to go back and let's pick another color that's like the reins, but isn't the same so that they look a different color than the, than the, than the harnesses. So... You know, the heck with that. We're probably not going to do that anymore. We're going to use this method because I was really happy with how it worked the other day. Okay, so we're going to remember this color here. Okay, meaning we're going to come back to it. So we're going to add this color and we're going to add more of the core color to it like we always do. Okay. Maybe I should give this a name. If I was going to name this, this method, I'm going to call this the evolutionary method. And you'll understand what I mean by that in a little bit. Now we're only going to paint. We're not going to, we're going to leave the reins alone. Okay. We're only going to paint this harnesses, which luckily is only across the front. Normally some of the horses have a, a harness or something across the back. This one has it only on the front. Okay. And again, we're going to brighten this up. And if this color here ends up drying out, I'm not worried about it. I can replicate it. Okay. It's, um, some people look at this and like, man, I don't want to mix all those colors. I can't get the same color right. After you've done this so long, I needed to touch up a figure that I painted 10 years before and I knew what core color I used and, and what the darkener was in it. So you just, you kind of know, just like some people know how to play the piano. Um, it's not that difficult to do after you've done it that many times.
that's what I find about painting. It, I don't think it's difficult. You just have to be patient, persistent, and because this is very relaxing, at least for me. All right, let's just go straight to the core color. Again, just doing the, the harnesses on there. The harness just fades into the little hair on the top of his head. and just add a tiny little bit of white to the final touch. Okay, we're gonna highlight places that would catch more light than others. Like this. Again, we've just, the rains only have the base color on them. It's the same color it's in here, it just doesn't have all the extra pigment of the core color of this buff, okay? So we're done with the harnesses now. So what the hell are we going to do about the reins now? Well, we go back to this main color, which may have dried out, okay? It did, uh, kind of. We're going to re remix it. Okay, so we'll keep that one here for example. Let's put some black in here. Okay, there you go. Done, right? This is the color that we have on the reins. We're just going to highlight this like this is the final color. So we're going to treat this color just like if it was this one. Okay? And what I mean by that is, let's add some white to it. And you paint the, and then highlight the rings in that color. So it's the same color as the buff. You just don't know it because it has all the black in it. Okay? And then let's add another layer to it. So we're just going to add the white to it, to it again. So you created another color that is, this would be equivalent to like if, you've, if you ever go to the paint store and you're looking at one of those um, sheets of the color of paint and it will show like the different um, greens. Like say you want to paint your color uh, in your room green and they're all in the same family and complementary to each other. It's kind of like the equivalent of doing that. You're not picking something totally different. You're just picking... Maybe you're picking the reins are made out of the same material on this horse that the um, that the harness is, but because they were stored in somewhere different or they were used more often, they faded faster in the sun. So maybe something like that. There you have it. Now we can get this thing to focus. You know what, this doesn't work with it. We need to do this, because no matter how stationary I am, I'm always gonna move a little bit. Let's do this, let's do this. Let's put the autofocus there. Okay. That's... Yeah, this really, it makes it look like it's almost the same color. It's not, it's gray versus the buff, so. Anyhow, that system works really well for me. So maybe you could try it. Hey, you don't have to convert the painting the way things I have. Maybe it'll just give you an idea of like, oh, I like how that turned out. What methods did you use? I look at other things that way too, you know? So anyhow, that's, um, and it, you didn't have to put another core color down. You already have it there, so. All right, um, so what do we got left? We got some hooves to do. We've got that little cushion to do. We've got his hair. The cushion, um, let's um, see, he's pretty bright. So let's do a cushion that's, um, let's see what we got. I don't wanna do blue. I want that this guy over here to be the only guy with blue on him of the, of the horses. He'll be the only one. And I'm still not 100% sold on his cloak, okay? Um, I may go back and change his cloak. So, um, I don't frequently change my mind, but 
It has happened before. Let's see. If I was sitting on a cushion, what color would it be? Um, let's do... Do I have a red one? Yeah, it's kind of a burnt red. Let's um, let's do a gray, but a little different color gray than we already have. Oh, this is like the color of the hose. Well, we'll leave it out. I'm getting encroached here by all this stuff. This will work. It's got a little bit of a blue hue to it, but it'll be fine. It's a tiny little area. We're not going to brighten this up very much, though. Yeah, I thought this was a watery one. I saw somebody do this in a video. They had, if you've got something that you think is going to be watery, just take your little, um, your little paper towel and squeeze it there instead of squeezing it here and making a huge mess. So... Just grab the the thicker bits from it and where's our ongoing black the ongoing saga we're gonna go ahead and paint everything in that color here which is a tiny area so I normally paint the horse flesh first and then paint the rest of the figure and finish with the horse mane because as I'm twisting this guy around I invariably end up scuffing up the horse tail so if it's already painted I end up scuffing it up and you know there's no need for that okay we're going to add a little bit more color to it not a whole lot we won't come up to the core color on this one. We're just gonna leave it be like this. But we've been adding little details of plaid to it, or tartan. Okay, everybody in the US calls it plaid, so uh, that's what I found out. It's like, what is this tartan? Oh, and the, the name we don't use. <laughs> it's probably the same thing as buffalo and bison. Right, everybody calls a, everybody calls those cow-like creatures in the American West buffalo, but they're not. They're bison. Okay, so now we're just going to take this color here, and we're going to add some white to it. Not that much, geez, but we do want some contrast. Too watery. All right, let's start over because that's too watery. Uh, all right, let's do this. Let's darken it. Add white to it. Just going to put some lines on here. Just some vertical lines. And then we'll come over here and do some vertical lines on it as well. Put a horizontal there. And then we're going to go in here and put a little hatch there, a hatch there, a hatch there. So if you look close enough, you could tell. There's some kind of a pattern on that cushion. And then we're going to take that same color. We're going to add more white to it. I got no experience painting this stuff. Okay. Tartan stuff, no experience. But I'm going to, you know, have firsthand experience because, man, this is fun to do. I tell you what. 
and I'm not painting anybody's particular clan colors, you know. So now we're going to come in and put another line next to some of them. And you just kind of have to give the impression of what you're doing. And your eye kind of takes it from there. Now, this isn't going to come out on camera at all. Oh, I love how that looks. You just kind of have to give the impression that there's something like that. And that might be anachronistic a little bit, but it's a tiny little area of, of a tartan type pattern. You weren't doing his entire cloak or anything. Okay, so now we're done with the figure. Um, we're going to, um, let's go ahead and do the horse mane now. Okay. And then I think we said earlier that we were not going to put any uh, socks on this, on this uh, horse. So we're going to stick to our guns on that and not do socks on this horse because the other two do. And I want to, I want to mix them up. So, um, the, um, let's do something a little different. Let's create a blonde. Nah, it's going to be. Let's leave this one. Let's leave this one dark. So let's go ahead and repaint all of the mane in black. This is how I operate, folks. I don't do a whole lot of planning unless I have a particular look that I want a um, a, a horse to have. Like if I'm painting Alexander's horse, and I know that I want him to give him that I want him to give him a black horse or something like that. Um, I don't do a lot of pre-planning. It's more important to be flexible, I find. The first army that I painted, I, a DBA, I was already a painter before then. I put them on these little dowels and on the dowel I wrote down, there's probably some of them floating around here. I'll find one for you just to see the I'd write myself little notes. Like here's one. Here's another one. I'd write myself little notes. Like this was the third figure on the third stand. This is probably like knights or something like that. Because what I would do is I would plan out which pose would be in which position on which stand and then I would uh, I don't have it on here, but I would put like blue or something like that. So I'd put his predominant color as blue. So I'd do all that pre-planning. That just takes forever. That just takes forever to do. All you got to do is just get a good mix. And then uh, if you watch the video that I did um, a couple days ago where I put the Scots Pikeman on, um, on stands and decided who was going to be in what position, that's what I do now. I kind of just kind of wing it and uh, give a variety and, uh, and just go from there. Um, it's has the same effect for the most part and takes no time at all. So all right, let's we're gonna we're gonna need more black than that. Uh, two mounds. And standing stones would be awesome as camp bases. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, I think I got these when I got the Scythians. I bought a, a, some, a Scythian army that I never painted. I ended up selling it off. Um, I want to say it was with um, Falcon figures. I ended up selling them off. So um, I like DBA, but it doesn't do a very good job of, of representing bow-armed um, cavalry. I just don't think that uh, it's a good game. It just doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work for me. I'm not. I'm not loving that part. So. Definitely could use some house rules. I just don't want to go down that uh, slippery slope. 
I don't want to play with house rules, really enjoy them, think the game is much better, then go to a tournament where they're not allowed and then feel like I'm getting screwed. So, uh, it's best not to mess with that at this point. Okay, and um, let's, uh, let's darken this slightly. Let's, I mean, lighten it slightly. My bad. We can keep using a big old brush like this. It's not that big of a deal because we're not adding in any really important details at this stage yet. Okay, and then now we'll ditch the big brush. Now we're gonna add some white. Oh, well, let's not add white. Let's add this color here. It's already here. It's already there. See what I mean about winging it? Just, uh, you know, just kind of go with it. And I don't know what it is, but when we end up getting to the stage where we end up sealing these guys with varnish, they look 50 times better. It, it really is amazing. It, it just ties in all of the stuff. You know, because there's black, there's a black line here in between the straps and the um and the uh and the rest of the figure. But I don't know if you can see it on video. It's it looks semi-gloss or almost even glossy because of the of the undercoat that I used. But that'll all get evened out in the same um, the same tone, the same shine level when you when you end up doing the varnish. Let's add a little bit more, and now we're just going to pick out the highlights. And I'm going to be really lazy because one of the things that I'm the laziest about is the muzzle of the horse. We're just going to come in and pick, pick it out in this color. And we'll give it one layer of highlight on top of that. But I'm really lazy when it comes to horse muzzles. Okay, mm, this is too bright, so let's go back one. Add a little, some line there for differentiation on the main. Add some back here. And then we're all on to doing the hooves. Okay. Where's my hoof color? What I've been using is, I'm, there's different variations. I, I don't cogitate on that too much. Um, here it is, stone gray. And then this will be the, um, the third horse stone. We got one left to do. We'll roll right into him. Okay. Being invaded by stuff on my... I look at people's painting area and I'm like, man, how do you get anything done? 
how do you get anything done? I don't like having all this extra stuff. It's distracting. Uh, okay, horse hoof time. I'll take that color, we're gonna add black to it and paint the whole hoof. One of those uh, German Panzer uh, dark grays color. Well, maybe Japanese fleet brown, that's some uh, Japanese fleet gray color, something like that, as this base color. It's just easier for me to just take a color and add black to it or white to it and lighten it up or darken it instead of doing like the three paint color method. Um, I'm not sure how the hell I started painting like this. I'm sure it was ideas from a magazine or something like that. And um, I don't think the foundry paint system was out yet um, when I started painting like this. And um, I've been happy with it ever since. I got nothing against foundry paints. They're just not available here in the States. Um, one of these days, I'm going I'm to pick up a, a triad of them at Historicon whenever they I've seen them there. Um, and just, just to try them out, probably in browns, I could always use more browns. Okay, lighten up a little bit more, this will be the final shade. And all these pieces of this, uh, of the casting, they come up to the legs and attach themselves so that he's got some support. All that will end up getting painted the the core color for the ground, that um, that chocolate brown before uh, before we mount him. Because it's easy to to it's easy to to reach him here when you've got him mounted on a stand. It's a little bit more difficult and challenging to get to him. So. Okay, and um, we're done. This guy's a wrap. Now there are three. One more to go. Let's um, let's put these little guys on this little pedestal. I wish I had more of these. I should I should find them. I like this little foam block. It's actually the inserts for uh, for a game. That was just there were extras on there. Let's let's not do that. We need more. We need more space. I decided to cut a piece off to see if I could use it for something, and it, but let's just say that didn't work out. So so here is exactly the same pose. Yeah, so they look boring in that they look like they don't have very expensive uh, things, but uh, I think they have a, I like the look that they have. Uh, you could see a little modeling I have here on the hindquarters of this, of this uh, horse. Yeah, I think they look good too. Cinedave. Is that like cine, like a uh, movie in Spanish? Cine Dave, you do movie reviews. <laughs> um, yeah, they'll be, and they'll look even better when they're, uh, when they're varnished up. I don't know what it is about the varnish, but it's just amazing. And they'll look even better in natural light. This, this, don't get me wrong, this light is perfect. This is an alt light that I'm using, but for some reason it's washing everything else, so. Yes, I do. Laugh out loud. Yeah, you, your, your sneaky name didn't get by me. Cinedave. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I should do uh, some 
I don't know if you guys are DBA players. I should do a DBA video in Spanish. I should do that. Get, get me some practice. I just don't know the technical words and stuff. So there's a there's a community in Spain that um, apparently are not embracing DBA 3.0. They're still tuck, stuck on 2.2. But I, I talked to one of the guys over there. I was like, you know, we could just do a live video. You run the video and I will try to play it as best I can in uh, in a um, in Spanish, which you know I can pronounce everything perfectly because um, uh, I speak Spanish with my folks, but I just don't have I've never been to school in it, so I don't have a vo it's a vocabulary issue for me. So, like I asked him, uh, I said, "What do you call skirmishers?" You know, skirmishers in Spanish, and what he told me was like a, a twenty-four letter long word, and I'm like, okay. Um, Maybe I will just say skirmishers in Spanish when that word comes up. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Victor. <laughs> Good morning, Victor. <laughs> yep, that's what I use as my, uh, my wear here for... Although whatever blend this thing is, I think it's got some... Uh, it's warm. It's kind of warming, which is not something I really need in Florida, but uh, nice work. Don't forget they're already wealthy fellows. They have horses. Yeah. Well, they're riding a meal, right? If things get too bad, they can always, uh, they can always eat their mount. Boo. Everybody boos except the French people. No, I don't know. I, I would, uh, it wouldn't take much for me to give up eating meat if I had to murder my own animal. So, okay, so last guy. So what do we have? We have a, we have a light gray one. We have two browns. I'm going to, my leader's already going to be riding a, a piebald, I think is how you say it. So, uh, a mixed colored horse. That's what I've decided that the leader is going to be riding that. And these guys don't have a leader. It's the, the other two, the other two folks. I'll bring those guys out here for those of you that have not followed my other videos. It's these, these two guys right here, okay? And it is also a light horse and um, the doggo, of course. I found a little wolfhound. This is why I pick up bits. I've got a friend of mine that don't want any extra figures. I always pick up figures when I, when I, when I can because you never know where you're going to use it. I've probably had... Escaramuzadora. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like somebody... To me, it sounds like somebody that you hire uh, to bring in your house to take care of, like, uh, pests like flies or something like that. <laughs> it sounds like pest control. <laughs> yeah, it's a vocabulary issue for me. I need to, I need to try that, though, because it'll be... Uh, that could be fun. So... Um... um Especially because I understand that people in Spain sometimes are uh, foul mouthed, so that could be kind of funny. <laughs> oh man! Anyhow, I'm getting off on other subjects. So I've got this little doggo that I picked up, um, and he's huge, and he's very wolfhound looking. So that would be like a perfect combination. But here's the leader that I'm going to use. He's wearing a cloak, and there's actually one of the leaders and one of the engravings or. or um, um, of the period that he's wearing a pink cloak. So we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to put a guy with a pink cloak. So when things go south, um, you know, we can blame it on the guy in the pink cloak. Hey, I'm always looking for scapegoats, right? I mean, that's why I want Scots and Irish in the army so they can argue about who lost the battle for each other, you know? Um, just fun little side side jokes and then stuff like that. But this guy, you know, this guy's high society because look, he's got shoes, he's got slippers. And no, I'm not going to paint him like they have. He's got panda slippers on or something like that. But um, this is going to be the leader. All right. And then this is the guy that's going to ride with him along with the doggo. And um, this guy's going to be the guy that holds. We're going to replace this uh, javelin um, with a flag. But I don't know. I can't do that yet because I don't know how big the flags are going to be. And they're due in at some point. So um, paint them like Crocs. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, they haven't been invented yet. The only clogs around are made of wood. So I guess I could make them wood. Um, but he's not Dutch, so that doesn't really work. 
<laughs> but anyhow, so this guy, we're going to replace his javelin with a flagstaff. I just don't know how tall I'm going to make it, and it'll be based on how big the little big man studio's flags are. Now, if this is anything to judge by, here's my Russians, my finished Russians. Their flag is, you know, I, I could make it bigger, but one thing I got to tell, I don't know if you guys can, can tell, see how the flag looks glossy? Um, I need to build one of these flags that I don't care for and, um, and cover it with um, some flat coat brush on and see what it does. I'm afraid of trying it on one that I really like, but they're beautiful flags. They're the little big man studios look better than um, than um, they would in real life, I think. Um, but anyhow, my unfinished Russians. I should do that next time. I've got like uh, st four or five stands of of knights to do, and then they're then they're complete. So anyhow, these are the this is the light horse general. So. Um, but we're, after we're done with this fourth horse, we're going to put these guys together on a stand. So I think we're going to try to do some fun things like putting them at an, at an angle like that. So they look a little bit more regular looking. We'll have some fun with that. So, okay. So last horse. Um, let's see. White one. Gray. Black is a lot easier. Maybe we should do a black horse. It'll be done in no time. Done. I sold my soul flying. And I can already tell you, I'm going to do a black horse. And the black horse will be on a stand with one brown one. And the brown one will be with the gray one. We're not going to put the two browns together because it just looks weird. So we're going to do a black horse and he will have socks on him. So, um, all right. So what do we do for black? Well, we're going to start painting all the horse flesh parts in black. Because, you know, that makes sense. Paint them like Crocs. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. So Cine Dave, where are you? Um, where are you out of? Let me know where you're hailing from. I should do that. I should do a a Spanish video, but I can't do it alone. Uh, there's just too many technical words. And. The problem with doing a DBA video in Spanish is there's some DBA terms which just don't correlate really well. And what I mean by that is I just finished my uh, my Arab, uh, my Courage Army a little while ago. Those guys are on a, those, are on, those guys are on a trip to getting their ass kicked. They're one in four already. So maybe i just don't do well with arab armies which is a shame because i really like them they're really they're very pretty looking seems like the more I, the more i like how an army looks the worse they perform so these guys are in for some headaches then <laughs> so i'm really liking how these irish are looking but um but anyhow um the the nomenclature issue is any kind of impetuous heavy cavalry in dba is called knights so um my courage have um their cavalry is all impetuous and um you know they're considered knights so having middle eastern arab middle eastern islamic types called knights is really weird and having to call them caballeros would be even weirder um so um but anyhow maybe that's just apparent to me because uh, i have a visualization or of what that should look like so um, but anyhow Houston Texas Houston is an interesting place um, Houston is kind of the opposite of where I where I live um, Houston is like um, went there a couple times for work and it's almost like it's like a competition where it's like, oh, you built a big old 
industrial thing sticking up in the sky. Well, we're going to build a bigger one. It's almost like they're fighting to see how much industry they can put in here. And where I live is a college town, so they're like against any kind of inter industry. You know, they call a four-story building a skyscraper. So it's kind of like uh, backwards. But I find Texas very interesting. I don't mean that in a bad way. Just uh, although it was really strange going to a restaurant and they still allowed smoking in it. At least when I went. This was a few years ago. You guys wear boots for everything. Like to go swimming, I think. You guys even wear boots. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Interesting place. Okay, so we're done with that. That was easy. Now we're going to do something different. I know some people say that a black horse really isn't black. Yeah, whatever. Um, we're going to do the base color in black. And, you know, like I said, I'm flexible. So I may end up doing, um, I may not light it, lighten the, 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 ho the black horse with white. I may add it with, um, with another color. But the first stage I'm going to do is... I'm gonna grab me. I'm gonna grab some of this black over here, and add this uh, the camouflage. So if he ends up turning into a really dark brown horse, I'm good with that too. You know, it's not like I have to have a black horse completely black. So uh, we're gonna go again. We're gonna go into one of these things I really enjoy doing a lot, and that is um, and that is uh, painting the horse muscles. And I don't look at. I don't look at pictures of them. I just kind of go with the flow. It's, you know, if you're a horse specialist, then, you know, you're in the wrong hobby. Now, I did read some somewhere that, um, that it's very unusual for a horse not to have, um, I'm going to say white, but I don't necessarily mean that some white um, spots somewhere. In other words, it's very unusual to have a horse that doesn't have like one uh, sock or has a star on its forehead. It's very unusual to have a horse that, that is completely um, devoid of any um, light spots on him. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, I tell you what's really weird, was really weird when you find out that you could actually have a horse that could have one sock and no other ones, or like, you know, it just looks like you would miss something as a painter. So I think I've done that before. Um, maybe we'll do that on this guy. Maybe we'll give this guy one sock or three or... When you do two on the front and, and not on the back or the other way, it doesn't look bad, but when you're, you're adding one sock on one side and the other one doesn't have it, then it's like, that's kind of weird. Like, it just looks like you did something wrong. So, to the untrained eye. Okay. Escaramusa. I have to remember that. Great, it's the lightest troop type and it has the longest name. Perfect, that makes sense. Typical Spanish, right? Or Germans that way. Long ass names. <clears throat> All right. Now, we're gonna avoid the tail completely. Um, right. Let's go ahead and add more of this right here. And then we'll start lighting it, light, light, lightening it up. So 
So I frequently paint in the mornings, but there's a time of morning where things just go south. And that's about 9.30, I'm guessing. And what I mean is it goes south is I have a transom window in this room and you would think that natural light is good. Well, not when it interferes and comes in straight through here. So you've got a mixture of both of them and it gets a little awkward. So regardless, we're gonna to have to cut off about that time because it's just gonna be um, awkward. So we'll see how far we can get. I, I wanna get this guy done today, so. Um, so that when those damn nights come in tomorrow, I'm guessing tomorrow. They've been sitting in the same distribution center for like three days now. They were sent priority mail and and somebody that's uh that drives somebody that drives a Jeep has been sitting on their butt not getting them to me. I guess that's the bad thing about having tracking. You know where they're at. And it's like, dude, they're like my, just a few miles away. I want to get them. And not that I need them that badly. I just wanted to do the unboxing video when you have a long weekend. Not when you're pressed for time Monday through Friday, which is what's going to end up happening. So, <sighs> mess them up and call them by German names. <laughs> well, I've got German army to do that with. Uh, Harvey Gernt. Yes, I paint my horses with at least one sock and often the star too. Okay, the star is preferred to as a is referred to as a blaze in this part of the world okay that would be i gotta write you guys down gernt you are the german that's hiding in the uk i think <laughs> not to give you away <laughs> uh char charm mulze i have to hit keep hitting the screen to get the thing charm Charmutzle, Charmutzle, yeah, in German for skirmisher. No fair, you know English, Spanish, and German, damn you. I know only combat names and um, um, what I like to call my World War II, my World War II German. I know World War II and, Ger and beer German. Oh, man. One of these days, I'm going to get back to painting World War II stuff, but it's not going to be anytime soon. It'd be just for fun. Um, I, I can't play that stuff anymore. I'm too 8 over 10. Of the, the amount of detail that I want is just stupid. Nobody's going to want to play with me. I guess I could do solo videos. That'd work. All right, so let's um, let's take this core color. Let's just forget that this was a black horse. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of this. Mainly because it's right here. See how I get lazy? I don't want to be, uh, it's not lazy, just uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time hunting for things. So we're going to come in here and do some highlighting. And warm them up a little bit with, um, with this color. And we're going to leave the the darker sessions, sections towards the hoof, um, we're not gonna lighten them up. I was looking at a couple of people that had those contrast paint things, what they've done with the contrast paint. And what would be really weird for me is to, um, it's like painting the opposite of how I paint. Like I paint everything dark and then lighten up as I go where the, where the highlights would be. And contrast paint is like watercolors. It's the opposite. So you'd have to paint every, if you wanted something light, you have to paint it first. Um, and that's going to be, that, I need some practice or I'm going to end up screwing something up like that. But I got so many of these darn paints. I may end up picking a, a um, uh, contrast paint up at some point, but I think you have the base in white or a light color. So, you know, that's, that's just too much trouble that it's worth for me, you know, but 
I'm not really interested in painting quicker. I just need to paint more often and not spend a lot of time cogitating. Like, I just grabbed this color right here. That just saved me a lot of time instead of going by and doing something else. So, um, doing these live videos saves me a lot of time, keeps me on task painting. So, stuff like that is a lot more useful to me than just reinventing my painting style. So, okay, so we've got, we've got this. We're going to go one shade higher and just go really light with it. And like I said, if I don't like how this turned out, I could repaint this whole damn horse because the paint I'm adding is so thin that it's not, um, it doesn't really mess up any of the, of the horse itself. Now, the one thing, the strange thing you notice about horses is um, usually the belly is a lighter color than the rest of the, of the horse, but it's so strange trying to get yourself to paint something that's hidden in the shadows as a much lighter color than something that's just all around the outside. Um, so I kind of try to forget that that's a thing. Even though I just remembered it. Hmm. Oh man. Missed a lot of these. In the Napoleonic period, Spanish skirmisher battalions are called cazadores. Yeah, hunters. Casalores should be um, Spanish Jaegers, because it would make sense. They would be hunters in both, right? Uh, finishing up my 15mm Wild Elves, and I have 15mm Imperial Romans for DBA, then 15mm AWI, etc. Perfect. I'm the guy with a German surname in the UK, not a German. We have a few families here who started with German names, Sasa Gotha Koberg, for example. Yeah. So you're one of the people that you're one of the German surname people in the UK that is not royalty. <laughs> awesome. Um, it's just kind of a weird assumption. Maybe it's just me. I just assume that other countries are more uh, homogenous. Not the right, right, right word. It's early and I've only had a half a cup of coffee, so I apologize. But the word is uh, more, I would, just looking at it from the outside, you think of, say, people in Spain would all be more, have Spanish names than people here from, like in the U.S., there's, there's names from everywhere. And maybe that's just a misconception. Um, I know it's a misconception because I've watched a few shows that are in, in, um, uh, Spanish shows from Spain and the actors will have non-Spanish surnames and, and it it's just like huh? It's just like a double take for me but I guess there's people from everywhere everywhere so um, okay so this is the quote unquote black horse we have he's kind of like a dark gray brownish a little bit I like how he turned out let's compare him to so we'll do just fine okay so you know what time it is? It's Lina time. And I'm not sure if it's Lina or Line or... But we're going to get old, good old Green Ochre. Which is a weird name for this. This is this is about as close to... This is like a Panzer Dark Yellow there for German World War II tanks. That's what it reminds me of. And I believe this is where this one hangs out. Yep. Harbach is a German name. Yep. Those sneaky Germans. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, I'm blessed with having a really cool, um, what do you call it? Crest of arms. I'm, you know, I don't have a bent over guy blowing a horn out of his ass. And I say that because we just watched a Monty Python. The Holy Grail. There's some, uh, there's some, uh, shield, uh, uh, there's some crests that are uh, less than um, less than cool. We'll leave it at that. And I found a Harbach one, and it looked like a um, a plant um, growing out of a pot. I'm like, oh, see, your guys were freaking growers back in the day. You guys were growing marijuana back in the day. That's where you were <laughs> known for that. So, yeah, he's uh, he is German. 
initially. Yep, the land of beer. People in the UK are really defensive about their uh, their their beer thing, about uh, the quality of their beer. See, for me, it's like I think that the Germans got the market on the beer. That's that's what they do. Uh, English can be better at uh, winning wars, and uh, the Germans can be better at uh, making beer. But uh, every place has good beer, uh, except Italy. Italian beer. I've had two Italian beers and no, you guys need to go back to, you know, the other stuff that you're really good at, which is a lot of things, you know, so. <laughs> oh, man. But since you have a German surname and you live in the UK, what do you prefer, English or uh, German? <laughs> There's not a whole lot of this little guy. You know, I wish I would know how long ago this casting was made sculpted because I know it's it's got to be at least from the 80s and and it's a very basic sculpt, but honestly, I, this is the fourth one of these I'm painting and they're really nice to paint. I, I'm enjoying them. I like the horse shape. And you know, the Essex figures I paint, I'm not a big Essex fan. And the Essex figures I painted were pretty good, too. I don't like Essex horses, though. They definitely would make... Um, they would definitely feed your army well. Let's put it that way. They're nice on the chub side. And they just don't look... I, I don't like the look that they have. Just the horses. And some of their, their figures are... The fig, surprisingly, they have really good faces. The ones I painted. Um, sometimes their poses are a little weird. They like to go into flash dance, or um, I guess the 21st century version of that would be flash mob. <laughs> Favorite right now is Spotten. Okay. Yeah, I've had it. Uh, haha, that's why Mitch has plowed fields season most. That's why he's always talking about um, uh, rutabagas. Boy, he's got a rutabaga fetish. He's got a rutabaga fetish. So, he mentioned that a lot in the last video. The last video that will not be posted. It's. Um, that's what I did yesterday. I, I was trying to edit a video. We filmed last Monday and I, I just can't post it. There's two people playing, too many people showed up to play and uh, at the last minute, kind of pissed me off. And um, because of the planning, it's like the whole time we're gonna be filming and then the last 30 minutes before I get there, we're like, oh yeah, we're gonna have like this many people going to there. And I'm like, okay, well, so what, I'm not going to film. So I went through and filmed anyways, and it's just, it's too much background noise. We have um, two people playing, four people talking to the background, sometimes louder than the players. Um, the video quality is good. I guess I could post it and just take out the, um, the, uh, the sound. I mean, Fitch, uh, Mitch's feet make an appearance, and uh, he talks about rutabagas a lot, but, you know, People arguing about football and you know I was I was very disappointed and it's three it's seven it's seven games in, in a three hour video so it was very time efficient so um, I don't know what I'm gonna do I just don't want to, I don't want to put something out there that people are gonna be bitching about it more than if I don't put it out there so it's kind of I'm kind of in a dilemma you know so um, I still have it on my phone. I've got more memory on this phone than the other one, so I could hold on to it for a while. But it was a wimp war session, so we've got um, some unusual armies. But I thought about putting it on there, and um, 
I thought about putting the video up and then just turn commenting off, but you know, I don't want people to get the impression that, oh, all your videos are going to be like this from now on. I'll just unsubscribe from your channel. So it's kind of a moral dilemma that, uh, that I'm in. So it's a shame because I, anytime we do a game, we want to, and we're off this week. So, you know, it just, you know, typical when I have a day off, then, uh, we can't play. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a bit tired of having to rush and play on a, on a, on a work night. So, um, um, Okay, so we're done with the line on this guy. So we need to do the, um, let's do the flesh on him. Let's flesh this guy out. So it's kind of a little dilemma that I've, I've got. And I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. So um, that's the problem. You guys wanted new players, and that's what happens. So. Um. But I do like the multiple games on one video. It makes it a lot easier for me. And um, I think people are enjoying it more, I, which is weird. I wouldn't have thought that that would have been the case. Um, people, I guess, like the longer video. One person even commented that they like the longer video because there's multiple battles. So they don't know when the battle is going to end. Because if it was just one battle, you know that if there's, say, 12 minutes left, you know it's not going to end this bound kind of thing. So... I never thought about it that way, but I guess that's a good point. Um, my preference is to, to video every single battle we do because some really interesting things happen that other people may not may find hard to believe, you know. But uh, that's the appeal of this game is that there's always interesting things just when you've got it figured out, and, you know. It's, um, you know, not so... Uh, Harvey, Gernt, I'm easy, enjoying both types. English ale is my standard tipple, but German beer brewed to the Rhein, Reinheitsgebot. Reinheitsgebot is excellent top fermented with bottom fermented. Okay. I don't like anything that is bitter on my tongue. That doesn't mean I won't drink it. That's just not my preference. Um, so, um, lately I've been enjoying blonde ales quite a bit. So, um, but I don't drink very often. I like to talk about it more than I do. Um, this is a long weekend. I haven't had a drink yet. So I honestly forget. So uh, if I can get away with not drinking at work, I don't need it in my personal life. That's the way I look at it. So, um, it's, it's not really a necessary thing, but I, I, I appreciate the different, um, the different levels, the different, uh, the concept of it all. But doing these videos don't really affect doing the other ones because, you know, it's not like, well, we'd get more gameplay videos if Tony wasn't doing his painting videos. It, they're not they're not related one thing or the other. So we can only do the gameplay videos when it's game night. So there's gonna be a hard stop and anybody more than four shows up, we can't do the video. Like um, we're off this week. Um, but next week we're 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 bound to have more than four people. So there probably won't be a video again. So it's just one of those things. Um, But I'll still bring the camera equipment, and if some people have, like, an uh, unexpected car accident and don't show up, then uh, we can film. Gameplay videos are splendid. Well, thank you. It's, um, well, it is what it is, you know. They're not staged. They're not uh, rehearsed. There's no filter on us, so sometimes you get some interesting conversation. But, you know, this isn't a kid's, kid's show. I had one guy, the first time, that dropped an F-bomb in, in the video. 
guy like freaked out. Well, you probably don't need to be on my pay on my. You probably don't need to subscribe to my channel. I believe in just being who you are, not pretending to be one person and then you're somebody else. So, yes, occasionally there are, there's f bombs and there's people that we game with that are. Let's just say they set sail more than I do. <laughs> And that was part of the problem, too. I, I didn't want to have to edit the video the other day so much. But even with that, I'm like, okay, well. I miss the days when it was just uh, doing videos here at the house. But maybe we'll get back to that. That is so freaking hot. So freaking hot. You imagine playing a video in a shed. It's, it's a glorified shed in the backyard that has air conditioning, but it has two window units that don't work really well. And you can't run them while you play because they're so loud and they would drown out anybody else's talking. So when you consider all of those factors, yeah, it's, um, it's kind of uh, unfortunate. But it could be worse. It could be one of those where... You know, don't have any gamers nearby. So, uh, if I didn't have, and I've, and I've thought about just doing a uh, just a solo game, because you know I could talk through both sides and stuff. But I think I'm better off doing um, it. It's it's more pleasant for me to do this because you know we're getting stuff done here. So the sooner I get these guys done, the sooner. Uh, we get to mock people with an Irish accent in the battle. So, you know, that's going to happen. One of the things on my short list, and maybe I'll try to tackle that this weekend, even though I kind of had an, uh, I had a um, kind of a, a, a snag that happened uh, yesterday. I've got a, a styrofoam cutter. That I bought a long time ago. It's just battery operated. It's nothing fancy, and um, I'm going to build a. Um, I'm going to build a castle for these guys. There's a. I mentioned this before in one of the videos. Um, that uh, there's an Irish castle that somebody, an Irish style castle, somebody decided to build on the beach here in Florida, maybe about an hour and a half away, just north of a town called Saint Augustine. These guys built this castle, and it's a 10th or 11th century Irish castle. Uh, one guy was a stonemason, uh, and one guy was a uh, carpenter, and they got together and I think for religious reasons they built this castle because it's they they do like church services. It's non-denominational, but it, it is Christian uh, services in this castle like once a month. I've never been to one of them, but you'll be driving down the beach on A1A, which is a coast road there by the beach, and boom, this four-story Irish castle comes out of nowhere. It's called Castle Otis. You guys can look it up on the internet. It's O-T-T-T. -T -T. That's three T's, I-S. I think they named it that way for the three T's and in, uh, in, uh, meaning the three crosses on uh, Calvary. I had, had to think about that because I suffer from the opposite problem. Most people will call, you know, horse type troops, they'll call them Calvary. And I don't. I, I've never had that problem. I have a problem pronouncing um, this color, I'm told, but not Calvary. But it's Calvary, so the three crosses on Calvary. Um, I better stop saying it or I'm going to start making that same other mistake. But um, it's Castle Otis, O-T-T, -T, three T's, I-S. And they have a website. You guys can check it out. And... Um, I won't plan on, on uh, doing a camp or a, a, a structure based on that. Obviously, it won't have an inside or anything. And um, those are fun to do. They paint up really fast. And um, something inspired of that kind of style. Um, I did one of those a long time ago for my first army for my Spanish. And um, I really like how it turned out. So, uh, But I need to, my styrofoam cutter to work on that. So... Um, it's just one of those battery operated ones. It's um, it uses a D cell. I do have an electric one that's um, that's a lot more powerful, but I think I need to dig it out. I don't know why the D cell one isn't working. I've replaced the batteries and everything. Maybe just corrosion, but um, I don't see any corrosion. But anyhow, I was gonna I was messing with that yesterday, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time with it and and have a fail. 
Um, I don't mind spending a lot of time painting because at the end of the day, you have something to show for it. But if you're working on something like, like that, that doesn't, you spend a lot of time working on it, then it doesn't work really frustrating for, for my personality type. So uh, I don't mind this, what I'm doing right now, taking a long time, but uh, at the end of the day, I, I will have uh, something to show for it, you know, unless I suffer a stroke sometime between the time that I finish it, <laughs> between, before I finish it, but um, yeah, check it out, Castle Otis, it's in Volano Beach there, and um, pretty cool. Still hoping you get back to historically themed games like Wars of Diodaki. Yeah, so the problem with that is, is we're, we can only do that when I can play, and it's just Mitch and I. So that situation, we have the opposite problem everybody else has. We have too many people here. So we are going to go back to it. We did mean to do a, um, a gap of other games, but, you know, unless I can get together with them, just me and him, we're not going to be able to get back to that, which means it might still be a couple of months out, but we will get back to it. And it probably will be uh, three sessions for sure to get through them all. So if I wait long enough, I'll convert, uh, build the two stands by Ptolemaics and I can use my own army in there. We won't have to use his uh, ancient figures from days ago. Uh, but that's the only reason we haven't done that. We have too many people that show up. So, which is fine. It's just a problem with when you involve filming. And this last video taught me that, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm sticking to my guns. You, you, a fifth person shows up, forget it. And even four might be an issue if it's the wrong people. So, um, I don't mind being social, but it doesn't work if, you, if you're talking too much. And I'm guilty of it too. I get, I get revved up with it and, you know. Um, next thing you know, I'm having a conversation not related to DBA in the background. It just, it just, it just creates a fail. But next time it's just, uh, him and I, assuming my Irish aren't done because that's going to, that'll take priority. We will get back to the, uh, the historical stuff. So, although I think of all the games we've played, the best series has been Saloy Silliness. Because Wimp Wars is pretty good, but the fact that you have to have six skirmishers in an army minimum, there's some crazy stuff happens. And you guys are going to see armies that don't normally hit the, hit the field, and armies that most people don't even want to play, you know. So, um, those are a lot of fun. Diotiki. I heard somebody pronounce it like that. I can't do real Greek pronunciation because that's, you know, the two languages that I speak help, do not help with Greek at all. Um, it's just counterintuitive. I had one guy that was telling me how to, I should pronounce Saloy and I said, well, the problem with that is I'm not going to remember. And then nobody's going to know what I'm talking about when I mention them. So I'm trying to get in the habit of calling Saloy skirmishers because that's what they should have always been called. So um, I'm trying to get in the habit of calling them that. And rules be damned. Hey, it's my videos. We can make them however the heck we feel like. You know? So. I don't mind calling them Saloy for using Greek armies, but. When it gets really out of place, it's weird. This guy looks like he's got a soul patch. I'm not going to paint that on. They'd stone you if you had a stone, uh, uh, a uh, soul patch during this period. <laughs>
and we were doing videos probably for several weeks twice a week but my daughter has a new schedule where she needs to be picked up at swim so that doesn't really work and it's just too damn hot in the freaking cave it's just way too hot that's the last thing i want to do when i leave work is be in more heat Actually, the thing I look forward to the most is coming home, changing my clothes, and showering. So uh, I'm not going to shower and then go in the in the, in the shed for sure. So, all right. So we got this shade on him. Let's start adding uh, sunny skin tone. Time to paint his toes. Highlight of the day. You know, if I don't paint his toes, he just has a stub of a foot. I mean, he's barefoot. You're going to see his toes unless they're, unless he's been, you know, stepping in cow pies all day long, which might be actually realistic, but let's not bring that into it. The only disappointment thing about these figures is they don't have any facial hair. I guess I could paint it on there. That's just one little burr that just won't leave me alone. Let's see if we can find something dark. Put an end to this guy. There. Is they don't have any, these guys don't have any facial hair, which they probably would. But I don't want to go in with epoxy and build it up, and I don't want to paint something that's not there. So I'm just going to assume that these guys are young. Let's add a little bit more of this sunny skin tone. And then the next one after that, I'll be adding some more white to it. It's adding not some more white, some white to it.
Skylab says, I'm a fan of all your game themes so far. What about terrain theme games? We've done them. They just not, might not be on videos, but yeah, definitely. Um, that's, a, that's a good thing. We've done forest, we've done hills, we've done, um, we've done rivers. We just may not catch them on video. Again, we, that's what we do every, every week is we'll do a different type of theme. We don't play opens. What happens is, is just that, um, you know, it's just a matter of, it's just hard to predict how many people are going to show up for the game. So, um, we've done BUA ones where you have to put a BUA down. Um, the other thing we do is, um, maybe we'll do this with the Irish is, um, not sure how many the Irish, how many enemies the Irish have. Oh, here we go. I sent myself down the rabbit hole. Let's see how many enemies we have the Irish have. It is when we have a new army that shows up, somebody plays the army, the owner of the army, and then and then you play through all their enemies. One, two, three, four, five. They have five enemies. Maybe we'll do that with the Irish. We'll play through all their enemies. Do they fight themselves? They do. Well, we'll skip that one. We don't like doing civil wars. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. We'll play, uh, one person plays the one army, and everybody plays the other enemy in sequence. And sometimes the matches are not fair. And that's okay. And sometimes those are the ones you win better. So... Maybe we'll do that with the Irish. Just a matter of whether or not we catch it on film, so. Like this next Monday, not today, this next Monday, um, somebody's supposed to come up that has never come up. And it's the same week that one of Mitch's friends from up north is supposed to come down to Florida. It's like all these things that never happen are both happening at the same time, plus we've got the normal people. So we could potentially have seven players. It's just not filmable. So... But I can tell you, as soon as these guys are done, these guys are going to, you're going to get tired of seeing Irish people. I do need to, I need, I do need to find some, uh, uh, a list of Irish phrases that I can say to folks when I'm mocking them. So we'll have to, to find those. That's the problem that we have. We have too many people. Take care of some maintenance here. Nope. Okay. All right. I don't like pop-ups coming up on my phone. Like, what's this? You know. Australian Brett, Australian Greg wants to get tucked in. <laughs> it's the morning. It's not the evening. What are you talking about? You need to get a job working uh, nights, so that way we can be up at the same time. Right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, this guy's looking a little Ziggy-ish. That cartoon character, Ziggy. I got some... Uh, the skirmishers in my Ptolemaic army, the figures are made by... Um, Tin Soldier. And some of their figures are very cartoonish. And these guys in particular look just like Ziggy from the old comic strip. All right, let's add that white we promised we were going to add.
Man, I like painting faces. Assuming it's done well. The face, I mean, the casting on the face. And this guy's going to be a blonde, by the way. Obviously, because he's riding a dark horse. Need for contrast purposes. Okay. Well, we said it was going to be blonde. Let's uh, let's do it. Now, it'd be really easy to just take this color that I already have out there, but I don't want it to look lazy. So, um, let's get this out of here. Don't need much of that. dot of this out here. I'm not really sure exactly how I'm going to go about this. Not because I haven't done this before, but I don't try to plan this much in advance. Do we have a brown already out here? We don't. All right. I don't want to use... I don't want to use War Master or Army Painter. Why do I keep calling it War Master? War paints. I mean, I may not buy any more of those. I, I don't like how they apply. They just don't cover great. All right. No, Tony, put your paints back so you don't create a freaking mess and have every your whole area encroached. All right. That one's too big. Let's go to this one. Oh my goodness. Harvey Gernt, Pog Mahone is a splendid introduction to Irish. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to look it up. Pog Mahone. And I wonder if that's a cut down or or something I can look up. I'll look it up on the internet though. And if it's dirty, that's fine too. Uh 10 20 p.m. here. This is the last of the light horse excluding the general. Yes, it is. Matt Varnish, a little early, but I'm painting as well. It's never too early to paint. Matt Varnish. You know it'd be funny if you don't varnish your figures. Oh, man. Okay. So we're going to make this do to blonde. All right. And since I'm using paints, you'd be a bottle blonde. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. All right. Um, we're just going to do this little mix with this. Uh, what color did we use this? The color are mid-tone for the basing. U.S. Field Drab. Interesting. It's U.S. Field Drab, or in Spanish, it's um, Earth. Tierra. Okay. Not an exact translation in every language.
glad I knocked out the yard work I needed to do on the first day of the three-day weekend. So I don't have that looming over me. Okay. So there is this hair color. And actually, if I lighten that up, it'd probably be just fine too. But we, need, we want more contrast with the horse color. Uh, not that someone with a hair color couldn't ride a, a dark horse, but it's just going to look better if we uh, if we brighten that up some. All right, so what did I bring all my... Uh, okay, so this is what we were working on, so let's lighten it up some more. Okay. We still want some of this original color shining through because it'll add more layers and it's going to look better. So the rest of this, we're just kind of paint like it's got, you know, like we're just painting his hair, all the rest of these layers. Okay, that's done. Next. Um, what happens if we add this yellow? What happens if we add this here? I don't want it to be very close to the color of his skin, so that may not be the best choice. What happens if we do this? Oh, we're not ready for that yet. Okay, cool. Well, I can already see the light coming up over there. When the two lights, it's kind of like Raiders of the Lost Ark. When they went, you know, when this light and the other one meets, it's, you know, instead of showing you where the treasure is, it's like it screws everything up. <laughs> It brings about the apocalypse. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and add um, some of this to it and bring it up. white dye no well, let's see if we can uh, necromance it Okay, now we're going to have to add this yellow at some point. Let's see what happens if we add it now. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. What color cloak we're going to do on this guy? Let's see. Maybe a dark red one. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, now let's add a little bit of that white now. True, I don't varnish them. Wow, irony's a bitch. Should be able to find a translation. BCS, they are never truly done. Because they're never truly done. Okay, cool. It's pronounced boog. 
Poog, long O, Mahoon. And yes, it's none too polite. Poog Mahoon. Yeah. Knowing English and Spanish doesn't help with Gaelic pronunciations. Poog Mahoon. That's got to be something my something. And we all know what that is. <laughs> oh, man. So I got to figure he's on the... I've, you guys ever seen my horde stand that has a guy with uh, mooning everybody? This is the other horde stand that I've got yet to do. It's got a guy giving the one finger salute. So he's going to be on the other horde stand whenever I get around to doing that. These, I believe, are... Um, Thistle and Rose figures. Um, yeah. Anyhow, talking about Rude. Yeah, that'll work just fine with our games. You guys know we're... We're off-color folks, so... We enjoy that. We compare these other ones. Ah, it's okay. Let's go a little bit more white to this. Oh yeah, just a tiny little bit. There we go. Okay, that guy's done, and he looks different than these other guys. All right, what's next, the cape? Well, I gotta decide how I'm gonna do this, so I don't wanna make the wrong decision. So, we already know that these two horses are gonna be on different stands. Oh, it's off, off the camera, it's not gonna work. All right, we already know but these two will be on two different stands because they're both brown. I don't want to put the two brown horses on the same one. So, if this guy's over here and this guy's here, we don't want to give him a dark red cape because this guy's got a red shield. So if I give him a dark red cape, he's automatically going to get sent over to being part of this stand. End of story. Okay? There's no other way around it. So with that said, do these two look okay together? Yeah, and that works. I could just do a gray, a gray cape. You know, how about we do a gray shield and a red cape? All right, this time we will use a dark red. That's already dark redded enough. This is uh, burnt cadium red. You know what? I thought I had whole red. I guess I don't have whole red. Okay. Well, the next time I go by Hobby Lobby, I'll pick up a whole red. I keep forgetting to check if I have one. And it's not that I need all these colors. It's just a good starting point to when you're doing these blending. It saves you some time. This, cover, this color in particular covers very well. Um... Some colors cover really well, and some color cover awful. This color covers awful, right here. This color they call dark red. For some reason, it, it covers awfully. I don't know whether it was just a bad batch, or... I don't know. This one covers great. All right.
This is going to be dark red, but you guys aren't going to recognize this as dark red when I'm done with it. So let's come in here. Well, let's go even darker than that. Hey, and if I don't like how it turns out, I'll just repaint it. Not that big of a deal. But I want to add some contrast to his hair. It's right there. Okay, let's add some red to it. Okay, now, let's do something crazy. Let's see what we get over here. Mm, it starts turning brown. How about adding more to it? Pop is that doesn't cover worth a damn. Because not only is that a yellow, that's a War painter yellow, so it's super transparent. All right, let's go up one level. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So we're going to go up one level here. You want to go up too soon because then you don't leave yourself room to add more colors. The only room you allow yourself is to make it even brighter than you possibly need, than you might. So you need to kind of pace yourself. I really like the way this guy's face turned out. Cool. Me likey, me likey. Okay, and then we're going to take this and we're going to add whatever buff color this is. Again, you can't make these guys too bright because then when you go and make a leader and you really want to make him bright, you got to go like way over the top to have him outshine the other regular guys. Because you got to leave yourself some room to improve it. Or you get, you'll have your back to the wall. And um, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, we could just use this one right here.
Okay, so we started with, with a dark red and then ended up with, it looks like it might be pinkish, but it doesn't. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the, um, let's go ahead and do the javelin. Okay, I already got this color here. They can all be little variations of the color. They don't have to be exactly the same color javelin. You know what though? I'm going to, I'm going to punt on that one. Let me get this color. Because I'm threading a needle, but I'm putting this light colored javelin in between the light colored hair and his shirt. And I want to make sure that I don't, I make it dissimilar enough that it does not look like either one of the two. I know it's almost the same as this one, but it isn't. It's less yellow, yellowy. All right, let's start over. This is where experience comes in, because you, you know like, okay, this isn't gonna turn out how I think it's gonna turn out, so. I'm gonna go ahead and add this and this together. All right, now we'll paint. This javelin in that color. Are we going to say he has a he was he has a gray shield okay grayish like shield I'm gonna have a tinge of green in it so I think I'm not using like a uh, field drab or something like that this to it. We like burnt red also instead of whole red. I don't have the whole red, but um, I've seen it at the store. We don't have really a hobby store that, I mean, we've got some, we got a store that carries some games workshop stuff, but they're always out of everything. They don't restock worth a damn. Um, Hobby Lobby is the only place that has um, Vallejo. They don't carry all the colors. They carry maybe a third of them, and um, but they do have that color. And um, luckily, they carry chocolate browns. I use the living hell out of chocolate brown. This color right here, I use that, that brown. I use it a lot. It's the main base color of my uh, most of my basing. So I'm glad they have that. If not, I just have to mail order it which I don't want to do, you know, but they're always running a 40% off coupon. So if you can find something that they have and you only need to buy one thing, um, yeah, it's a savings. 40% off is pretty significant. Okay, all right, I'm done trying to necromancing the white. There we go. 
won't need a whole lot of this. More of this will end up drying out than I ever use, you know, but. You're lucky to have two stores that have a Yahoo I concur with Army Painter coverage, but their washes are top notch. Army Painter Tufts are good. Army Painter Tufts are excellent. They're, they are superb. Um, I have quite a few of their things. Um, and, you know, the paint's coverage, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's probably less of a deal for me than most people because of how I paint. So, um... And Matt, where are you located? That they have two hobby stores that have Vallejo, so I can move there. I'm kidding. But um, hobby stores here, at least in the U.S., in this part, are... You know, there's, there's two stores here in town that have them. That have, and they have only Games Workshop. One of them doesn't restock at all. The other one has stuff, like, behind the counter, so I can't look at the paints and stuff. And it's like, it's not really interested in that. I mean, if you... If you, know, if you don't want people walking off with stuff, put your display like by the counter where you, they're in view, but not like, hey, can I look at that paint? Can I look at that paint? It's kind of like going to a store where you have to ask somebody to try on shoes. I, I avoid those places, you know. Uh, I want to just go in and get my stuff and, you know, no hiccups to, to that. Okay. So where are we now? We're in the shield time. We're going to use a greenish gray shield. Uh, what do we have? What do we have? We have a million of these. Let's see. Let's, um, well, talking about favorite paints. Let's pull out my favorite paint brand. Let's see what we got over here. We have anything that will work. Coat the arms, baby. Field drag. Now that one's brown. I think field gray. Here it is. We'll use field gray for that. Favorite paints. Maybe not my favorite containers, but the favorite paint. This stuff flows amazing. The Army Painter Factory is right near where my brother lives in Denmark. You'd think they'd be cheaper there, but but no, taxes, yeah. Tell me about it. Every place sucks for taxes worse than here. Every place. You're in Ottawa, Canada. Yeah, you might not like our winners. Um, I don't want to shovel it, but snow is snow's beautiful. You may not like our summers. We got bugs that'll carry you away. <laughs> I think I'd like your I think I'd like your winners more than I'd like your taxes. <laughs> Ooh, this is very green. Ooh. Wow. Okay, that'll work. Ooh, except it's similar to this other guy. I have a shield already that's kind of, ah, let me get it in this. This guy's shield's already that type of color. Okay, time to punt. That's not gonna do it. All right, how about a buff colored shield? Will that make him too buff? <laughs> no, we'll do that. We'll do a buff colored shield. Now let's pull another buff. One that we haven't used. We have lots of different ones. Well, we're talking about army painter, aren't we? So let's go ahead and use skeleton bone. Let me take my glasses off so I can see. I like that. He will my coin phrase. I can't see. I have my glasses on. What? <laughs> Long story. Got yeah, the Danish paints. Made in Denmark. And 
case of eye contact. How the hell would that happen? <sighs> okay. Skeleton bone. All right. Let's use a different mix in. So what if I didn't use that brown? You know what? Let's think outside the box. Is that field gray I said we weren't going to use? Man, this stuff flows so well. The coat, the arms. Yeah. Let's paint the whole shield in that color. I'm a lunatic. Let's paint the whole shield in that color. Not the whole shield, the the wooden part, not the boss and not the rim. The iris of the shield. So earlier, I brought it up and I forgot to mention it, evolutionary painting. The reason I call it evolutionary painting when I did those two colors because it was kind of like evolution. You know, they start with a common ancestor and then they kind of split off from that. So to mention something that happened over an hour ago. Okay, so we've got this color. So we've got this greenish type shield and then we're going to lighten it up by adding this to it. The skeleton bone. That's why I coin that evolutionary painting. Start with one color, add black to it to create kind of a, a shade. And then before you get back to that same core color, you start splitting off, highlighting it. In other words, not waiting until you get to the, the actual color it was derived from. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna look different. Good. Way way too watery. Damn you, army painter. Coat the Arms, the old game workshop paint company. Yes, I've heard about that. Yeah. The USA is awesome for taxes. I'm painting stowage on my M1 tank, so I can't really evolve my color schemes. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, the US is great for taxes. It's bad for days off though. It's bad for days off, which isn't that big of a deal until you want to go like say somewhere like Europe 
and you want to take a couple of weeks or three weeks off in a row, it's it's in, it's damn near impossible. So, of course, that's not an issue this year, but I'm just saying in the future, it's bad for... I've never been to Canada, but maybe we'll make it up there sometime. And several Canadians come to Historicon, or they used to every year, nice folks. I can't remember if they're from Toronto or what area. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, hello. Yeah, that's different enough. Okay. I don't think I'm going to highlight it anymore. Maybe just a... Maybe just a tiny little bit of... You have a brother. Is he a brother or cousin lived in Denmark? Go to the Lego factory there. I bet that's a cool place. Assuming they let you walk in. Denmark. Army painter. Danish cookies and Lego. <laughs> Good morning, Joe. By the time you woke up, um, you have the worst of both worlds. High taxes, less days off than you. What? I think you guys should revolt. We'll, uh, we'll ship you some guns. <laughs> uh, I said hi to you at Historicon, but you guys were busy in your tournaments. Yes, there was a group from Toronto and another one from my area. Cool. Well, next to Storicon, I make it a point to to um, to see. You. Hopefully, we'll meet some more. Um... Yeah, you can take tours. Danish women. Oh, there's pretty women everywhere, especially Canada. Canadian women are beautiful. Um, there's pretty women everywhere. Um, I'm not in the market for one of those. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, it looks like these poor guys dried out. So, um, okay, well, you guys ready to make history? I may regret this. So this paint that I transferred over, I'm going to have to use it now. So before we get started on the wrong foot, let's pull this booger out. Because one thing didn't make it in here yet. It's still in the master bottle. We don't want to do any of that. We want to knock this guy out. Another plug for Army Painter. Mixing balls. I could think of a few ad cam campaigns for that. Hey, if you need some balls, we got your balls right here. Oh. There we go. And let's put this guy back on. Because we're going to have to mix this. So I have no idea how this the top to this thing is going to behave. But here goes. And we'll get to see how watery it is. I had to add a significant amount of uh, airbrush thinner from Vallejo. That's what somebody recommended I use. We'll see if this is the worst idea I've ever had. Well, it's not starting off well. It's getting quite a bit of spillage there. So we'll see. We'll, we'll try not to squeeze this very much. Well, we didn't have to squeeze it at all. Oh, boy. The whole point in putting it through these is to avoid the, sp the mess that it was creating on the other one's end. All right, let's close this quick before.
Whew. Ticking time bomb. All right, let's see how this paint behaves now. We're gonna do the rim and the boss on these guys. Yeah, I'd go to Historicon and not even play any games. It's just fun just speak talking to folks and seeing what other people did. There was a game, um, it was last Historicon, that um, these guys had had put together a game. It was over on the second or the third floor there of the, of the convention center, which is really nice. I'm really disappointed that... Um, that wasn't held this year, but you know, so be it. We all got screwed together. Um, I've already reserved my room for next year, so hopefully it'll go off. You know, we'll go to it as soon as they start holding them again. So, um, but anyhow, uh, they had this game on the second or third floor, and these guys had built a war game, and it was a GI Joe theme war game, and they all all with three D printed tanks and everything, and. It was really, really well done, really well painted and stuff. So I thought that was really uh, funny, you know, made a, made all this, the scenarios and stuff. You know, they didn't use any action figures. They just made like 28 millimeter figures based on the action figures. So I thought that was pretty, that'd make a cool game. And I think their little data, they had like the same data cards and stuff for like their stats and everything. So it was a, it was a nice homage to, to the cartoon that uh, we all grew up with. Um, that's, that's funny. That was really, really funny. They had the whole works, they had trouble bubbles and all kinds of stuff. It's funny. Okay, so we got that. Now we've got his cushion to paint and the strappings, and this guy's about done. All right, so we have a very dark colored horse um, and a very light colored shield. So let's do the strapping, say, somewhere in the middle so we can kind of split the difference on that. So let's see if we can get, um, well, we don't want to use cork brown, but I'm thinking of something like cork brown. What's this guy hanging out over here? You've been working on 15 millimeter Achaemenid Persians. Perfect. Can you not just use PB gun pellets? Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna rust. Some people complain about rusting. Um, I didn't have any, so. Um, wait, you're in Canada and they know you have a BB gun up there? Uh-oh, you're in trouble. You better keep a low profile, they'll come after you. <laughs> Will they corrode in there? Yeah, I've heard that they have. Three hours gone, I'll have to catch up. Yeah, John Peter, what have you been doing? You've been drinking German beer, haven't you? Shame on you and not sharing. I didn't get up to the second or third floor, played in Flames of War and Team Yankee Tournament. <laughs> John Peter, get, get painting. <laughs> look at this color, ochre brown. I wonder if this would look okay. Yeah, let's roll with it. This thing looks watery as shit, though. Looks like it's got a lot of yellow. Want to bet? Place your bets in. You guys got five seconds to place your bet in before we find out if this is too watery. Weird. Well, here we got crusty stuff in there. Looks like the inside of an ear has never been cleaned. Yeah, I went there. Uh-oh, this thing's sealed shut. It's still watery, though. Just you wait. That's uh, oh, it smells weird. I grew up with um, building models and model glue and all that stuff, and it never occurred to me to smell model glue. I mean, it's, a, it's a poison. Yeah. If you want to get a buzz as a kid, just have a beer. <laughs> yeah, it's watery. That's okay. You're not getting off so easy. You're still you're still gonna make an appearance. I 
I've had company over for the weekend since Thursday, so they kept me from important stuff. That's what you get for having friends. Shame on you. <laughs> oh, man. Love it. I love it. You know, the funny thing is, is um, like I mentioned earlier, I love talking about drinking more than drinking. Um, but um, gaming and, and drinking never really went together for me. Uh, I started gaming at an early age when, um, you know, couldn't buy beer and stuff. And, and I was always playing games that were thinking games. And we're going to do, by the way, we're going to use this same, um, what did I call it? Evolutionary painting with this. So um, this is going to be the core color for when we go in a different direction with the um, with the reins. I think I'm going to keep that going because that saves me a lot of time. You wouldn't believe how much time I've spent cogitating about what color to do the reins after I did the straps. So if I keep them kind of in the same color family for the most part, uh, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. So. Um, for watery paints, use anything that vibrates. Har har. But seriously, even something like for shoulders you can buy at Walmart. Works wonders on separated paint. Live resurre I've resurrected many a paint using it like 10-year-old Viejo paints. You can res them. Okay. Yeah, I figured there's something else you could do. You don't have to buy a, 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 a paint shaker, per se. Um, and a lot of it may have to do with the particular bottle that I bought. My, might have been, um, say, on a supply truck a long time in a hot environment and started to set and just kind of ruined the whole thing. Or, you know, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't bought enough of them more. I've bought the same color over and over again that gives me trouble. And... Um, and I could compare, you know, say one that is in good condition as opposed to one that isn't. So. It might have something to do with that. Kind of like when you go to, if you buy soda at a store and you get, you know, soda that's been sitting in the sunlight, it'll lose all its flavor. Might be a situation like that. All right. I don't know if you can see. See this here? See the shadow? That's the sunlight coming in through the transom window. So that's... Uh, that gets uh, confusing and uh, annoying. Now, I don't think we're gonna go up to this full color because we've already gone up to, to this stage and I'm pretty happy with where that is. So I think we're gonna add some white to it and lighten it up from there. But it definitely has some yellow properties to it that it would not have had had I been using one of the other colors. So those of you that have enjoyed um, doing the painting stuff while I'm doing the painting, don't forget to subscribe because that way you can uh, get notified when I come online. So um, trying to do as much of this as I can. Um, okay, now where's that uh, evolutionary? We're going to go ahead at that point and ah, I didn't follow my own advice. I still need to use, I still need to use this core, same core color though. So I do need to paint. 
Man, it's watery. Hold on, I could do better than that. Where is that color? Let's go over here and squeeze some of it out on this napkin. And see if we can get some of the meat of it. Boy, this is you insolent color. There we go. All right, now let's pull it over and bring it over here. All right, so let's paint the reins. That's what I'm supposed to do in the first stage is paint the reins also as well. Now, we won't keep going up with that. We will, um, we'll add the white to it. Okay. Let me check on one thing. Okay, T minus 15 minutes. So we got 15 more minutes. And uh, how long have we been on here? Wow, three hours and 32 minutes. Excellent. Can you guys see the, can you guys see the sunlight here? Now, normally, if I could get the sunlight, um, let me see if I can, I can even turn this light off. What do we got? Well, now it's super shadowy. It probably takes some hell of a good, good pictures. But anyhow, um, yeah, just having the two different light sources is kind of weird. Um, it's a little disconcerting, but um, let's see what we can knock out in 15 minutes. We got a cushion to do, and um, let's see if we add some other colors to this. And um, let's, let's try to add a darker blue. Let's grab us a darker blue, and I got this blue that's really weird, okay? And it's called gray blue. But if you look at the color, it almost looks like what I would call French blue. It's a beautiful blue color. Now look at the lid. It's very grayish. So you look at this, you grab it, and it's like, oh, this is going to be a beautiful mid-range, full-color blue, and then... You end up getting this gray color. Weird. Weird, weird. That one. Oh, we're just going to use good old Prussian blue. I think that this one's full flavored. Yeah, it's pretty dark, but that's okay. Uh, let's put it over here. All right. Oh my goodness. I missed a lot of stuff here. Uh, there's a $40 paint shaker for a cheap ass $10 thing from Walmart. Just a useless fact. American beer is not weaker than most other beers. They use a different form of measurement. U.S. goes by alcohol by volume, and Canada goes by alcohol by weight, or vice versa. 
Okay, Revolut and both the US beers are terrible in comparison. Your bourbons, however, are top notch. It works at the same volume of alcohol. Just a fun fact, amaze your drunk friends. Okay. Well, there's good beer everywhere, I think. Um, there's bad beer here, and there's some stuff that's outstanding, but um, mass produced, maybe not the mass produced stuff, but. Um, So, I don't drink very often, but I find that I get drunk a lot faster. Okay, let me use the term drunk. When I say drunk, I mean having a buzz, okay? Nobody wants to get drunk. But um, I find that I get a buzz a lot faster with beer than I do with, say, whiskey or tequila or anything. And, um, and I thought it was the strangest damn thing ever. And... Um, I'm like, well, I got to find out why this is because something that's half, yeah, 50 proof is, no, 50, no, 70 proof is what most things are. So that's 35% alcohol as opposed to beer that's normally a tenth of that. And the beer gets me more messed up. Well, the thing is, I looked it up, apparently the carbonation uh, irritates your stomach and allows the absorption to be a lot quicker. So, um, if I'm going out somewhere and I want to have uh, a beverage, I usually have beer. That and I make really good mixed drinks. So I don't want to go out somewhere and they have some poor quality crap. So, but yeah. I feel beer a lot, a lot more than I feel alcohol. And I also have to drink a lot more water after drinking beer. That dehydrates me a lot more and I get a, a headache from it. All right, let's lighten this guy up a little bit. See, now it's like trouble concentrating. I've got this light here that's fighting this one here, so. It's weird. Very strange. It's only at this time when it's coming straight into the window at the angle. Okay. And we'll do some plaid as well. I don't know if it's anachronistic or not. I don't care. At this point, I'm going to use not white. Hell, let's use this little guy over here. Let's use this damn skeleton bone, I think. Or is the skeleton bone over here? Yeah, that's what it is. This is the buff we've still had. Now, is this going to turn green if I mix the two together? Let's do, a, let's do a check here. Nope. Just adds a little bit of a detail here to the the all riding uh, the all riding on cushions that are um, have tartan on them. Okay, that's it for that. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let's do something I never do. Let's 
paint the horse hair. And let's use the same, I'm trying to find it here. It's really disorienting with this other light source. You gotta be here to believe it. Put some, some of that. No, I'm not gonna do that, it changed my mind. I'm just going to paint it black and light, lighten it with white. Okay, and where's our white hanging out these days? The live one here. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put socks on this guy or not? I think we said we were going to. All right. Still have some other color here. And we need more white. Good timing. I'm done base coating the stowage. Take it easy. Okay, perfect. Glad we could have you struggle through together through painting something you don't enjoy because there's always some stage of the painting process that's less than enjoyable. It's always something. All right, sock time. Well, I don't think I'm really speaking out of turn and saying, I think I'll get these guys done today. But I don't think I could have done it if I wouldn't have been painting live. So this is extremely helpful for me. The fact that it's helpful for you guys too is plus. So we'll see if we can't sneak in some painting later today too. So, um, honestly, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this process a lot more now than I ever have. So, I guess it's not buffering today. If somebody would have commented on it by now. I'm not sure why I would have buffered to begin with, but it's got to be people that are on the internet all at once.
No. And let's paint something on his forehead. The mark of the beast. <laughs> oh man. So when I paint the socks, I kind of mix the core color just so it kind of blends in from something similar. And um, I like using kind of like a, almost like a, a wet dry brush technique when I'm doing this, because if it's uneven looking, it kind of, you know, would kind of look that way anyway, so. It works for me. Okay. So this guy's done other than the hooves. We're gonna use the hooves in the stone gray. And, uh, but we'll do that off camera because we got to do a wrap on this. So we got to wake up some sleeping folks at a certain time. So we'll catch you guys next time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed painting. We did uh, three hours and 45 minutes. So I appreciate you guys that, uh, that came by. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you guys can get notified when uh, we go online again. Until then, uh, see ya and happy painting.